Hello, it is Monday, January 30th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle today, so it shouldn't be too challenging. It should be a nice, gentle uh, beginning to the solving week. I'm very sorry yesterday's video went up so late if you were in a time zone where that was um, apparent. Uh, for some reason, I uploaded the video and YouTube simply didn't, uh, it didn't ever process. It spent some, I don't know, 12 hours or more um, never posting. So I had to re-upload it uh, late last night, my time. Uh, so apologies about that if you were wondering what was going on. Apparently it was up on YouTube, but sort of unviewable. I don't really know. Anyway, so it's, it's up there now. So uh, today's hopefully timely edition of the Daily Solve, I suppose, hopefully not delayed, has been brought to us by Henrik Kuskinen, David Innes, Josh Lucas, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. They do support this channel and keep it going, as do all of my patrons. And uh, thank you to those five, those benefactors. If you'd like to join their ranks as a benefactor and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. Uh, so yes, thank you to them. Thank you to you if you are a patron. And uh, if you'd like to become one at any level, you could, of course, do that at that very same link and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So again, thank you to everybody who keeps this channel going. And um, thank you if you're considering becoming one of those people. Uh, do also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not done so. And in another link in the description field, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community. Um, all right. Well, what else is there to say? Let's get on with the puzzle. This is a Monday crossword, so it should be a themed puzzle, not too challenging. And it was constructed by David Steinberg, who is a very experienced constructor, over 100 New York Times crosswords to his name. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, shall we? Trace of smoke, a wisp of smoke is a common um, phrase. So it looks like we have four... Uh, circled cells throughout the puzzle. No idea what those yet will be, but we'll find out. A good time was had by all. I'm pooped. All right. Uh, tick off to Irk. Somebody maybe. Dolphin's home is the sea. And LaBelle, known as the godmother of soul. Uh, Patty LaBelle? Oops. Would be my guess. Engaged in some risky behavior. Skated on thin ice. There we go. That works. All right. So there's an N there. I wonder what that means. No idea. Okay. Ooh, I didn't need to know that. TMI. Too much information. And genre sometimes mixed with rap. They could have ended this clue after genre. And there's a high chance it would have been emo, which I think at this point I, I'm willing to declare the official um, popular music genre of the New York Times crossword. Uh, so there we go. Emo rap, I suppose. It, it might be a very common genre. I don't know, but I suspect it's a, possibly more common in the New York Times crossword. Half diameters are radii of circles. So a, ra a radius is a half the diameter of a circle. And prefix with C system could be ecosystem. Jerry's partner in ice cream, Ben and Jerry, the ice cream brand, McIntyre, known as the Queen of Country. Oh, Reba McIntyre. So we have here the Queen of Country and here the Godmother of Souls. We have uh, two um, honorifics, I suppose, uh, for singers. Major monitor maker. Acer is a computer manufacturer. They must make monitors as well. Bespectacled cartoon aardvark. Oh, Arthur. Arthur. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever actually seen that cartoon, but I think it's... Um, Children's cartoon on PBS, I believe. I didn't know he was an aardvark either. Is he an aardvark? I'm saying that because it starts with A-R-T and I'm trying to picture that character and I I guess he is. I don't know. Let's say that's the answer until proven otherwise. Non-negotiable salary limit is a hard cap, maybe? It's non-negotiable. It's hard. To move slightly is to stir. So you could be sleeping and maybe you stir, you move slightly and then perhaps you awake. Uh, rear could be the hind of an animal. For instance, it's rear, hind legs, rear legs. 
like aged cheddar. Aged cheddar would be sharper than less aged cheddar. I like a very sharp cheddar. Activist who co-founded uh, Black Lives Matter. Oh, I'll recognize, I'll recognize her name when I see it, but I can't think off the top of my head. Flooring installer could be a tiler for, you know, typically bathroom or kitchen floors. One gets ready, one preps, sit-ins, some protests. And uh, sort of a um, big thing in the 1960s, the sit-ins. Uh, to disavow something, you know, a, a position or something could be to recant it or a statement, a claim. Measure of time in music could be arrest. So arrest measures uh, sort of empty musical space rather than notes you play. Okay, poetic contraction that omits a V, probably ors, as in over the hills and dales or what have you for, for over in a po poetic way. Bar she blows, a kind of stereotypical old sea salt might yell seeing a whale. Microphone jack for one. Something input, audio input, there we go. And a word before trick or tip, hat, hat trick or hat tip. All right. So a tip of the hat or a hat trick is a, I don't know, you've achieved three things in some particular sport. I don't remember. Uh, Twitch sports, all of that, that all refers. Okay. Aid abbreviation could be one's assistant, an assistant, an aide. That's not true. Uh -uh. And I think I've pointed this out before, but I do find it one of those funny little linguistic conventions. I think... When you see U H U H, that means uh uh, that means no. But when you say U H and then possibly hyphen H U H, that means uh huh, that means yes. So uh uh versus uh huh. Okay, alternative to a station wagon in brief could be an SUV, a sports utility vehicle. And appetizers sprinkled with paprika, hmm, oh, deviled eggs are generally sprinkled with paprika. I'm appalled. This is an outrage? Well, maybe. That actually fits the crosses. That's kind of <laughs> sort of shocked. That might have worked the first time. At least it worked lengthwise. Let's check the crosses. Greed, gluttony, or sloth. Either one of those is one of the seven deadly sins. So that's why it's singular because of that or. It's only greed or gluttony or sloth is a sin. Assemble as a book. You could bind a book. And use with caution could be applied to a dangerous bit of machinery or something. Cook for too long, say. You burn the food. And Aquafina is Nora from Queens. I've heard of this series. I've not seen it, but I am broadly aware of it. So there we go. Nora. George Eliot or Mark Twain. Those were pen names. And again, or. So George Eliot or Mark Twain is a pen name as opposed to George Eliot and Mark Twain being pen names. Okay, pseudonyms. Uh, alphabetically, first group in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Unsurprisingly, I suppose it must be ABBA. I mean, I suppose <laughs> I was going to say it starts with A. It must be ABBA, but then of course it starts with A. It could be completely different. It could be a you know, could be a group consisting of four A's, and my cross wouldn't disprove it. But I suspect it's ABBA. Let's check the crosses on that as well. Duh in modern slang. Um, I don't know. Maybe something here is wrong, actually. Fella. Bub. Letter after alpha. Beta. Oh. Right, this isn't rest. Oh, that's so funny. I completely whiffed that one. So what is that? Measure of time in music. Oh, the beat. Ah, right. I see. Yes. Okay. I was on the wrong track entirely there. I was, um, you know, I was thinking of... I just thought of rest rather than beat. And so I just kind of reverse engineered a, a, a reason to justify why this would have been rest. No, it's a beat as in the rhythm, the tempo of the music. Okay. Uh, letter after alpha, beta, right, okay. And misenter a passcode, say, is to err, to make a mistake, to commit an error. Chunk floating in the Arctic Ocean is a berg. So I think this all worked with this as an outrage. So what was this then? Duh, in modern slang. I mean, this is certainly ABBA, Beto, yeah. Um, 
I don't know. In modern slide, maybe it's too modern for me. Wouldn't be a huge shock, but <laughs> yeah, I just have no idea. Hmm. Maybe, maybe maybe it'll be screamingly obvious when I see it. I don't know. Agency for drivers, the DMV. Oh, obvs. Right. It's this sort of almost unpronounceable thing. I think this is probably one of those phrases that wouldn't have existed if we weren't living in a kind of text-based culture. I could be wrong about that. Maybe people would have naturally abbreviated ob obviously to obvs, but it, it feels like it would have derived from text because it is such an awkward, the BVS is such an awkward collection of consonants in English to be adjacent that I sort of suspect it probably arose in large part from a text abbreviation before making it to, to um, spoken language. Anyway, that's just my guess. But obvs for obviously. Certain restaurants or their customers. Diners, right. You could have a sort of greasy spoon restaurant, a diner, and then the people who patronize it are also diners. To be honored before burial is to be... It's to... Before burial. Lie in state? Oh, maybe this is obvi. Okay, that's less... That's less difficult to pronounce. It's not, a, in fact, at all difficult to pronounce, but also I've never heard it before. I actually have seen obvs. I don't think I've ever seen obvi, but I suppose it makes sense. It is it is a more verbally, sort of vocally natural way to, to uh, contract the word, but it's not one I've ever seen. Anyway, to be honored before burial would be to lie in state so people can sort of come pay their respects. Okay, place to wear goggles would be a lab, a laboratory, wear safety goggles. Have we looked at this yet? Watch over as a fire, you could tend to fire. And Wolf, who wrote This Boy's Life. Thomas Wolf? No, Flaky Fish is a cod. About in dates could be circa, so dates, uh, years, for instance, you know, circa, I don't know, the year 365 or something. Portuguese or Spanish would be Iberian, so both Portugal and Spain on the Iberian Peninsula, peninsula so the adjective Iberian. Um, oh, Tobias Wolf, is that right? That sort of sounds familiar. Analyze as or, yes, to assay or to sort of test it. And the mother of Zeus is Rhea, I want to say. Rhea and Cronus, mother of Zeus. Is that right? Enclosures for shark watchers, cages. You could go in a shark cage. And itsy bitsy is, of course, a childish kind of contraction of, well, I guess of itty, itsy bitsy, itty bitty. I don't know which of those is. <laughs> it's one of those the more informal of the other? Probably not. They seem equally informal in any case. Uh, oh, right. Here's our revealer. And with 67 across, in a sudden and completely apparent way, or... A punny description of this puzzle circled letters. Right, I completely forgot about this. Oh, it's right under one's nose. N-O-S-E. Right. Oh, well, the nose will be here, surely. Right behind your nose. In a sudden and completely right. I really want that to be under, but it clearly isn't. Right beyond your nose? I couldn't find it anywhere, and then it was right beyond your nose, or you couldn't find it anywhere. I suppose that works. Is that right? Take to court. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. Um, why can I? Sorry about this. Uh, take to court is to sue somebody. French word that sounds like an English pronoun. We oui, for yes in French, and of course that sounds like the um, first person plural pronoun in French. Or if you're using it in the royal manner, as we discussed yesterday, the first person singular. Uh, Christmas carols uh, are Noel's, and a little bit of color could be a tinge. Maybe this isn't nose. Oh, right between your ears. Sorry. So your nose is right between your ears. Very clever. Okay. I was absolutely right between the ears, I guess. I was completely taken by that. So utterly... Uh, misdirected there so, so we're sort of we're sort of alluding I guess to two different 
idioms, the right between the ears, which is the one that's not just alluded to, but printed in the puzzle. But then we're, there's sort of a bit of an allusion to the idea of something being right under your nose, which in a way this revealer sort of is, I mean, it is kind of literally underneath the nose that's been spelled out, which is kind of in the shape of a nose. I think you could claim of someone looking over towards the left in profile. Uh, so this was very clever. Smallest poodle variety. Tea, a teacup? Not sure. Clawed breaking tool, a hoe. Oh, is this seriously not ears either? Right between the eyes. What am I doing? This is a catastrophe. Anyway, I'll, the rest of my comments hold. Um, what doesn't hold is my complete inability to just land on this much more obvious idiom than ears. I don't know why that came to that before eyes. <laughs> anyway, a hoe would be a tool for breaking up clods of, of, of earth soil. And then records with only a few tracks for short could be EP, EPs, extended plays of shorter records, shorter vinyl records than LPs, long plays. And messy semi-liquid sequence could be goop or glop. Uh, smallest, po oh, toy, toy poodle, right. Okay, and I just didn't see that because I had... I had this wrong. I had the eyes incorrect. Okay, the eye of IRL is real as in real life, and droops is sags. I guess your eyes could be sort of drooping and sagging. Uh, make like a puppy's tail wag, and steaming cupful would be a steaming cupful of tea. All right, so we'll come up here. Veer suddenly. Um, zig or zag. And relatively easy section of a jigsaw puzzle, the edge, because you at least know it will be the flat edged pieces. Source of milk for some cheese could be a goat. That confirms the veer suddenly is zag rather than zig. A curtain hanger is a rog. Oh, right, and I forgot to go back to this. Alicia Garza, there we go. Activist who coveted Black Lives Matter, and then curtain hanger is a rod. So is that the puzzle? It is. <laughs> All right, maybe a bit of a trickier Monday puzzle than, than is typical. Um, although nothing in this puzzle was trickier for me for some reason than landing on right between the eyes. I mean, it was just, you know, I suppose originally being misdirected by nose and thinking, ah, we must be referencing nose here, uh, which doesn't actually make sense when you read the revealer. My, putting nose there wouldn't have made any sense because... This says this is a punny description of this puzzle's circled letters. Saying right, whatever I wanted to say, something like right beyond the nose or something like right your nose, that wouldn't be a punny description of these. It would just, nose would just be spelling it out. So a punny description of this puzzle's circled letters is right between the ears, I guess, as I erroneously first thought, because that is anatomically true. And I suppose I misremembered the idiom. But in fact, it is right between the eyes. There we go. So I finally landed on the correct thing. It only took me three attempts. Um, but I guess the third time was a charm. So there we had it. And uh, other than that, I do, I do think this was maybe a slightly trickier Monday puzzle than usual. But I made it more difficult than it needed to be <laughs> towards the end, that's for sure. Uh, let me know how you fared with this one. Um, this is an out. There's some good good fill in this, especially for a Monday puzzle. S uh, skated on thin ice. This is an outrage right between. Oh, right, and this was part of the revealer. But uh, these nice grid spanning, full full width clues. Very good. Um, so there we go. That was the Monday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be back tomorrow, of course, for the Tuesday puzzle. Should be uh, another relatively approachable themed crossword. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>